God has something special prepared for you. We have to make sure not to cling on the past, but that we can let go of the past hurts, harsh words that have been spoken over us, things that are holding us down. You can let it go because God is not finished with you. God has only begun. God has a plan and a purpose for your life. And there's so much more that God wants you to experience. But we have to let go of the past. We have to let go of what is holding us back so that we can experience everything that God has for us. So don't let your past trauma or good things hold you back of pursuing what God has for your life. Because good or bad can hinder us from experience God's best for our life. She will take care of you. We are having to go for the prayer and parent teacher meeting. So she will take care of you. We will be later on tonight. You guys go ahead, get ready for bed and sleep. Because in Germany, sleeping time is 7 p.m. The sun is still outside. It's still bright outside and you have to go to bed. Anyway, long story short, my parents said they're going to go for the meeting. And I wanted to be a brave boy, so I said, okay. But as soon as the car went off, I started to have something like, it felt weird inside. All of a sudden, I didn't feel so good. I felt very emotional. All of a sudden, my chest started to be a bit painful. All of a sudden, the breathing became more and more difficult. And out of the blue, I started bawling. I started crying and crying. My brother said, hey, what is going on? What's wrong? Now, I was seven years old. My brothers were eight and nine years old. My cousin who was taking care of us, 12 years older, 19 years old, she came and said, Stefan, what is going on? What is wrong? I said, I, I don't know. And I was just crying and crying. I couldn't stop. My brothers got ready for bed. They went to sleep. I went to my parents' room and I cried myself to sleep in my parents' bed. <laughs> so I finally fell asleep. My parents came home at night. My dad carried me to my room, to my bed, put me down. And as soon as I realized my parents are home, I could sleep soundly. You know what? I did not know that that time I had a panic attack. And you know what? It took me, I don't know how many years, only three years ago, it's three years or four years ago when I went back to Germany the last time. I was sitting with my parents at a dinner table and my mom started to tell me a story and said, you know what, I don't know if you remember, but when you were seven years old, your best friend from school lost his mom due to cancer. And all the teachers were so impressed with you. They came to me, my mom was a secretary at the school. All the teachers would come and praise me to my mom saying, you know what, your son is so good because he's always sitting to that boy, his best friend who just lost his mom and he would just sit there through the whole day and as soon as I would sit next to him, he would stop crying. And then years later only, then I realized what my mom was talking about and she said, after that, you became so attached to me and so attached to Papa that you could not even let us go out. Years later only I realized, you know what, that time I had a panic attack. Whenever my parents would go out, I guess subconsciously in my mind I was like, I don't know if my mommy and my daddy are coming home again. And I would just cry and cry. It would take me a few months to get over it before finally my parents could leave us alone at home again and I would not cry myself to sleep at night. You know what? That was what I would consider a childhood trauma. Childhood trauma. Now when we are talking about trauma, trauma, if you go into the dictionary, trauma is a deeply distressing or disturbing experience. And if I would have asked you before I said anything, what comes to your mind when we talk about trauma? The very first thing that comes to my mind right away is childhood trauma. But if we go into the dictionary and we look at the definition that it is a disturbing, distressing experience, trauma is not just bound or confined to our childhood. 
every time you go through a disturbing or distressing experience in your life, that can be trauma. That can be something that is wearing heavy on your heart. And we have to come to a place where we say, God, I need you to help me deal with this trauma. Because here's the big idea. The past experiences that we have, especially the negative ones, the distressing and disturbing ones, they will influence us today. And the decision that we are making today are influenced by the past experiences that we had. And we come to a point today that we make decisions based on our past experiences. So if we don't deal with trauma, childhood trauma or adult trauma, we have to make sure that it doesn't influence our decision making today. Because it will hinder us from experiencing all that God has for us. The main scripture that I'm going to talk about today is found in Philippians 3, verse 13. Philippians 3, 13 says, Brothers and sisters, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it, but one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining toward what is ahead. Now this is Paul talking. And he said, you know what? I am not perfect. I have not taken hold of everything that God has for me. But one thing I do, I forget what is behind and I strain towards what lies ahead. So the first thing that we have to do when we take Paul as an example for our life is that we have to forget our past. We have to forget our past. One thing I do, forgetting what is behind. Now again, if we go into the original, and we look at the word forgetting. It's actually the Greek word, ephilanto nominos. Ephilanto nominos. And the word, what is translated as forgetting, actually means to neglect, to disregard, not to pay attention, or failing to care for. So Paul is not saying you have to erase it from your mind because that would not even be possible in the first place. So Paul is not saying, you know what, push it far away, never to think of it again. He is saying, don't let your past experience influence your decision making today. Neglect what was behind. Do not pay attention. Disregard what happened in the past and make your decision today based on how God is leading you. That's why I'm, I'm straining toward what is ahead. I am forgetting, I'm disregarding what is in the past. We have to let go of our past. Not to forget, not to push it aside, but to deal with it and say, God, whatever is happening in my past that is affecting me today, let me deal with it today. You know what, sometimes... We go through life, something happens, and we have an unusual, strong response to it. That might be undealt trauma from the past. Something happens, you, start, you explode out of the blue, you get angry, you get so angry, it might be trauma that was not dealt with. Or maybe something happened like when I was seven years old, and I could not contain myself. I just started crying. I had no idea why. It was trauma, what was happening in my life at that time. We have to come to a place where we will deal with our drama. See, the thing is, everything that we experience, we will store in our memory. And the thing is, if we have things in our past that is negative, we used to, or we like to, take it and we store it and we push it deep, deep down. For instance, a trauma that I found is one of the most prevalent traumas that is worldwide is if you witness violence. Maybe against your mom when you're a child, your mom is abused, your dad is abusing or a family member is abusing your mom. You are witnessing violence. It becomes a trauma that we, you will have to live with and will influence you. 
So what we like to do is we take it, we crumple it in, and we put it into our memory, pushing it deep, deep down. And see, I have a lot of trauma already here. A lot of things happen already. Or maybe because we said trauma is not just your childhood. What about losing a job? Losing your job. The way of you providing for your family can be a traumatic experience. You might be distressed. You might be stressing out now. How can I provide for my family? You are losing your job. Can become trauma. We crumple it up and we put it in our memory. What about divorce? You're going through a divorce. You went through a divorce. Can become a, a traumatic experience and we put it into our memory. What about harsh words? Maybe during childhood. Maybe now harsh words that cut deep. You try not to show anybody, but it hurt. It really hurt you what was said over your life. We crumple it up and put it deep, deep in our memory. What about loss of a loved one? It might be a spouse, might be a father, might be a mother, might be a grandma, might be somebody that you love. It might be a baby or might be even something that you have lost. We crumple it up, put it deep in our... What about abuse? Abuse. Crumple it up, push it deep, deep down. We don't want to uh, deal with it. What about a medical issue? Coming back from the doctor. Diagnosis, you have cancer. Whoa, traumatic experience. What about injuries or accident that occurred? All traumatic experiences, we crumple it up, we put it deep, deep, deep inside our memory. Funny thing is, whatever is in our memory, we start to carry it around. So instead of leaving it in the past, we are now carrying it around wherever we go. And now wherever we go in our today decision, we are burdened. We are now burdened with what happened in the past because we are not ready to deal with it. But wherever we go, we are carrying a burden. And without even realizing our decision that we are making today are determined on influence on what our experiences were in the past. And let me tell you, for those who are still single, not married yet, especially the back row right there, if you have boyfriend, girlfriend, and you break up, you get your heart broken, you are breaking other people's heart, you are carrying around baggage, and every time you come into a new relationship, and maybe God has that one person right here, full disclosure, this is now the future partner that God has for you. Because last time I preached, I talked about the plant that was here, that we have to take care of it. And all Joanna could say, you know what? I was seeing you giving the illustration about the plant. And all I could think about was that the plant is not even a real plant. So I have to tell you, this is not the pulpit right now. This represents your future partner that God has for you. So now you had relationships in the past. And you broke up and now you are carrying the burden and you were trying to come close, but there's something hindering you. And that might be the trauma from your past relationships. Traumas of things that happened in the past that we are still carrying around. What we have to do is we have to come to God, put it on the altar of God and say, God, help me deal with my trauma and leave it behind. Come to God. Say, God, help me with the trauma that I have been through, the things that I had dealt with, the things that are still affecting me today. Let me bring it to the throne of God and leave it there. Don't go and take it away with you again. After the service, you go out of these doors and you carry all the trauma back with you. Come to God and leave it there. Leave it with God. Now, I believe I would do you a disservice when I just talk about all that you have to do is pray and bring it to God. Now, we have to understand that everything starts with prayer. Last week, Pastor David said, prayer is our lifeline to heaven. Everything that we experience in our life comes through prayer and we experience it by taking a hold of it through prayer. So everything has to start with prayer. But I also believe that some things will not just go away just by praying about it. Sometimes it takes prayer and that's all is necessary. 
You can forget. You can leave it behind. You can bring it to God and everything is okay. Sometimes it takes prayer and fasting and then you're finally free from it. Sometimes it takes prayer and fasting and counseling to finally leave it behind. Sometimes it takes prayer, fasting, and therapy to leave it behind. And sometimes I believe it even takes prayer, fasting, therapy, and maybe even medication. Now whatever it is, you have to find a way to deal with your trauma so that we are not held back by our past anymore. Like Paul said, forget what is behind. Leave it in the past. Don't let that affect you and your decision making today. So by forgetting the past, it's not that we are erasing it from our memory, but we are taking away the authority it has for us to make decisions today so that God can lead us into something that he has prepared for us. So we have to leave it behind. Now, if you're here this morning and you say, yes, I have things in my heart that are carrying around, that is holding me back, I want to give you a few promises in the word of God. Isaiah 41 verse 10 says, do not fear for I am with you. Do not be dismayed for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Whatever we are going through, if we know that it influences us or not, we can be assured that God is with us, that he is holding us up, that he is giving us strength, that we can come to him and say, God, give me the strength that I need to deal with this situation, that I can finally leave it in the past. It will not uh, influence me anymore. Psalm 147 verse 3 says, He heals the brokenhearted and he binds up their wounds. God wants to bind your wounds. He wants to heal the broken heart. Matthew 11 verse 28, Come to me, all of you who are weary and burdened, for I will give you rest. God wants to give us rest. God has given us the promise that he wants to stay with us, stand with us and walk with us. Isaiah 43 verse 2, when you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And when you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep over you. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. The flames will not set you a place. A promise that was given to the people of Israel, but we can take a hold of it for our life. Say, God, if that is true for the people of Israel, I am your child. I want to experience that in my life. Jeremiah 29 verse 11, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you a hope and a future. God has something special prepared for you. We have to make sure not to cling on the past, but that we can let go of the past hurts harsh words that have been spoken over us, things that are holding us down. You can let it go because God is not finished with you. God has only begun. God has a plan and a purpose for your life. And there's so much more that God wants you to experience. But we have to let go of the past. We have to let go of what is holding us back so that we can experience everything that God has for us. So I'm here this morning to challenge you. Maybe it's time to dig deep, deep into our hearts again and say, God, is there any issues in my heart that has not been resolved yet? Is there anything that with the help of the Holy Spirit, I can bring before you and you help me overcome this situation? And I believe God will do a mighty, mighty work in your life. So we have to learn how to forget the past to take away the authority from past experiences of making decisions today. The second thing is we have to learn not to dwell on the past. Not to dwell on the past. Isaiah 43, 18 and 19 says, forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. See, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? I am making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. It says, forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. See, now sometimes we think this scripture is telling us again to forget past trauma, right? 
past trauma, past bad experiences, negative experiences that we had. But if you go into Isaiah 43, it is a very positive and encouraging chapter. So the first three verses says, and we read a little bit earlier, it says, but now this is what the Lord says to you who created you, Jacob and Israel. Do not fear for I have redeemed you. I have summoned you by name and you are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. When you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep over you. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. The flames will not set you aflame. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. I even give Egypt for your ransom. And the list goes on and on about good things, promises that God gave. And he reminds them of all the good things that they experienced in the past. And then it comes here where it says, do not dwell on the former things. So what are the former things that God is talking about? It is not trauma. It is good things that the people of Israel experienced. Like being led out of Egypt, out of slavery. Walking through the Dead Sea on dry ground. Where Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego was thrown into the fire and it did not harm them. All these things God is bringing back to their memory and says, do you remember how you walked out of Egypt? How I brought you out? Do you remember how you walked through the Dead Sea on dry ground? Do you remember? But forget the former things. Forget what was in the past, for I am doing a new thing. See, there's something psychologists call rosy retrospection. Rosy retrospection, and that is, if you go into the dictionary, rosy retrospection is a cognitive bias in which people tend to recall past events as being more favorable, more enjoyable, or idolized than they actually were when they occurred. So now we are not talking about trauma anymore. Now we are talking about good experiences, positive things. Things where we saw God move in our life. But God says, do not be confined. Do not be held back by the good experiences. Do not dwell on the good experiences because I am making, I am doing something new. Because the other side of it is that we are held back by the good old glory days. Oh, back then everything was better. Oh, back then, when I was young, life was good. Oh, back then, when I was whatever, it was so much better. We are recreating the past, and it was good, but we are making it even better than it was really like. We have to sprinkle a little bit dust on it, stardust, a little bit glitter on top to make it even better in our memory than what it really was when we went through it. Now, no doubt it was good. What the people of Israel experienced were good things, but God says, do not dwell on the past. Do not dwell on the good things that you experienced because I am doing a new thing. So don't let your past trauma or good things hold you back of pursuing what God has for your life. Because good or bad can hinder us from experience God's best for our life. We have to say, God, in good times and in bad times, I want to reach out for what you have for me. I want to reach out for the good things that you are about to do in my life. But we have to pay attention. Number three, what do we have to do? We don't have to repeat the past. We have to make sure that we don't repeat the past. Isaiah 43, 19. See, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? The thing is, sometimes we are so caught up in our past, bad or good. We are so caught up that we are kind of losing focus of what God wants to do in our life today especially when it comes to the good things. We are saying, God, I want to experience that again. Now, I was a youth in the 90s when the Toronto blessing happened. 
When we had prayer meetings where the Holy Spirit were moving strongly, people were laughing, falling down, and I could say, God, I want that again. God, I want that again. But maybe God said it was good for the time, but now I am doing a new thing. So don't get caught up and say, God, I want this one, but I want to do it again. God, this one was so good. I had such good experiences. So let it happen again. But God is saying, no, I have something new for you. So don't be focused on the past. Look for what you are, what I am doing in your present and in your future. Little experience here. How many red cars did you see this morning when you drove to church? Anybody? Did you see any red cars coming to church? I don't know, maybe. You could guess, but you could not tell me exactly how many red cars did you see on the road. Why? Because you were not paying attention. Now, if I would have called you up this morning before you come to church and said, you know what, Vivek, when you come to church today, make sure you count all the red cars and tell me how many red cars do you see. Now when he comes to church and I ask him, he can give me an answer. Why? Because he paid attention and he was looking out for the red cars on the road. See, the thing is, if we don't pay attention, things that are there, we will miss. God is doing a new thing. God is doing something powerful in our today. But if we don't pay attention, we can miss out on what God is doing. So what do we have to do if we want to have that new thing that God is doing in our life? The first thing is we have to make sure that we surrender our will to God's plan. We have to surrender our wills to God's plan. Proverbs 3 verse 5 and 6 says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways submit to him and he will make your path straight. If we surrender ourselves to God, He will lead and guide us. But we have to pay attention to his leading and to his guidance. Because if we don't purposely pay attention, we will miss God moving in our life. So if we want that new thing that God said he wants to do in our life, we have to surrender our will to his will. Number B, we have to forgive and or repent. Now if somebody did something to us, If somebody hurt us in the past, if somebody said things about us, maybe behind our back that cut so deep, we have to forgive. See what the Bible says, Matthew 6 verse 14. For if you forgive others when they sin against you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others their sin, your Father will not forgive your sin. So God expects us to forgive. Just like we, when we come to God, say, God, forgive me, we expect God to forgive us. We have to forgive others who have done wrong against us. And I know, especially when it comes to childhood trauma, what happened in the past might be very difficult to deal with, very difficult to forgive, very difficult to move on. But somewhere in our heart, we have to find it in us and say, Holy Spirit, help me that I can forgive. Or maybe you have to repent. 1 John 1 verse 9 says, if you confess our sin, he is faithful and just, and he will forgive us our sin and purify us from all unrighteousness. If we come to God and say, God, what I've done in the past was not right. Forgive me. Help me live a better life. God will come in. The Holy Spirit will come in. He will help you live a good, righteous life. He'll help you live your best life. Number C, what we have to do if you want a new thing, we have to embrace God's grace and his love. Ephesians 2 verse 8, for it is by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not from yourself. It is a gift of God, not by works that no one can boast. So what is it? It is a gift of God. If we embrace what God has for us, his grace, his love, we can find it in our heart to let go of the past. The bad things that we have buried deep, deep down that are still affecting us, or maybe the good old glory days 
We can leave it behind and say, God, I am embracing what you have for me today. If we want to accomplish and live the life that God has for us, we have to manage our past. We have to manage, confront the things that are still influencing us in our decision making today. Because once we deal with that, we can now look for the new thing that God wants to do in each and every one of our lives. Amen. As the praise team come this morning, let's rise to our feet. We're going to have a good old-fashioned altar call.